Hello, peoples of the internet. I'm Rose. I'm Larks. And today we are doing our first episode of podcast. What was the name of the podcast? <laughs> Burbs and Books. Okay. Burbs and Books. <laughs> Great start. So, I run my own channel. I don't post a lot, but I do do um, audiobooks and make, uh, yeah, read audiobooks for fun for some reason. Um, I really enjoy reading. I read a lot, of, way too much fanfic, but that's basically it. Hi, I'm Larks. I just kind of really wanted to do a podcast as Rose and I were sitting around one day, and now we're here. Yeah. So I'm this... an avid reader of nothing, but I, I like books. Oh. oh, yeah. You read a lot of Percy Jackson. I do. I, I, yeah. Um, anyways. So, um, this week, or this month, we're trying to do this once a month, but it's probably not going to happen for the first year, because that's how this stuff goes. But um, this month's book is going to be Hatchet. And A warning before we get started, this book and conversation can get pretty gory in some parts. If that will trigger you in any way, please leave. Um, yeah. Basically, we are uh, teenagers and our podcast is going to be about um, how teenagers see the world. I don't know. Books through how our eyes. Read books. Some sort of... Um, cheesy line i don't know yeah but we both we chose hatchet for our first book because it's an easier one it's shorter um we both read it we both read it before so we did read it um again before this and took notes so that's fun but um, what do people like listening to what like, what do people like listening to is this it is it like meandering talk I mean, I'll listen to that. I find like, I find talking I just listen, fun listen to listen to. Podcasts. Yeah, I'll listen to people talking just to fall asleep. True. Like, ooh, do tell. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Hatchet, what was, what were your thoughts? What are your pronouns? Oh, yeah, I'm, I go she, her, so. Um, they, them, I guess. Okay, cool. I don't yeah. know. Who so, knows, really? <laughs> so, our... Rose, you go first. You have the better notes than me. <laughs> I took only um, halfway halfway through the book, I stopped taking notes because I was done taking notes, and I thought I was going to be okay with that. And I am, because also uh, I wasted a lot of sticky notes on this, since I have um, a hard copy. And my... F uh, my overall thought of Hatchet is just that it's a really good story. Not what I usually read. I usually go for more fantasy, mysteries, um, fanfic. <laughs> yeah, me, fan fantasy revolution with a hint of real life. Mm. So not normally, not what I usually go for, but I really ended up enjoying it. I actually read this book for school while I was in fourth grade. Yeah, fourth grade. Here. Okay, cool. Um, I feel like in fourth grade, I was not ready to read this book because I got very creeped out in the beginning scenes. Also, spoiler warning. I don't... Spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. It's a book review. What <laughs> are you doing here? Leave. <laughs> Unless you like spoilers. I, I actually like go out of my way to find spoilers for stuff sometimes. That's it. Podcast is ending here. We can't be... No. <laughs> No. Not a lot. Why? I just don't really care about spoilers a lot of the times because I won't actually go to see the movie or book that they're talking about. Like, yeah. I watch a lot of uh, theory channels. Like, have you ever heard of Super Carlin Brothers? They no. do stuff on um, just really interesting stuff about Pixar and stuff. And I watch very minimal movies. I've only watched a couple so then when they're talking about these movies, I only know, like, the bare minimum. <laughs> I'm like, I know this movie is about this. I maybe watched 30 minutes of it in a school cafeteria on Friday. Uh -huh. That's it. 
So I really like spoilers sometimes. But this is spoiler warning. That's where we are going with this. Okay. So what were your summary. what was your opinion on Hatchet? Quick summary. What was your opinion on Hatchet though? Quick. Okay. It was fine. I liked the book and it was disturbing at parts because the whole oh by the way, another spoiler here. Eaten alive. Oh yeah, definitely. I hated that. Who's getting eaten alive? Was gruesome, to say the least. I know it was. Uh... Yeah, but I think I skipped over about... that part while I was reading it this time because I just I like I think I skipped that whole chapter because I was like, no, mm. I'm not reading that part again. I am not going through that. But it's really interesting. A yeah, survivalist um, fiction is uh, fascinating to me. I are both like, obsessed with stuff like. I'm obsessed, if, um, in part due to family, with things like um, natural disasters and surviving in harsh climates. Oh yeah, definitely. I think it's just a human fascination that when something's so extraordinary or out of the ordinary that you want to know what it's about or what you would even do in that situation. So that may be me stereotyping all of humanity. For a while, though, I had that, like, same phase of going out of my way to look at survivalist stuff, because I just find it interesting. Mm-hmm. Like... I think it's neat. I looked at homesteading, which is, um, kind of like having your own farm, but, like, completely homegrown stuff, and then there's varying levels of it, so, like, some people don't even have, like, running water, but some people, uh, do, and, like, you have your own pigs and goats and stuff. I was super interested in that for a while, which I think uh, somewhat uh, relates to that, because, you know, you're surviving off your own food. Yeah. Yeah, that counts. Anyways, quick summary of Hatchet. Hi, post editor Rose here. Uh, We're going to be going into a pretty detailed summary, and we have some comments on that, but if you are not interested in that, you can skip to 1740. So, Brian is this 13-year-old from New York City, and he gets on a plane heading to Hampton to see his dad. Um, while he's... Oh, where did my notes go? Re- Apparently, um, I don't have any of the recollection, uh, recollection. I had to make a post-it note, like, in capitals, just saying, his name is Brian, because I never remember main characters' names. <laughs> like, his name is Brian, remember that, and I still don't remember <laughs> He's sucking names. Yeah, he boards a plane, but before doing so, his mom gives him a hatchet. Ooh, exposition. Boards a plane, and he's thinking about his journey on this plane. And the pilot kind of snaps him out of it, and he's just like, Hey, do you want to learn how to fly a plane? You, how old is he? You 13-year-old boy. (laughs) Do you want to fly a plane? And he's just like, uh, sure. And so he does, and then the pilot has a heart attack, and he goes spiraling into the Canadian wilderness. The pilot's <laughs> dead, by the way, into a lake. It had so many gory details with the pilot dying. I, yeah. um, while I was reading it in school, I was like, oh. Yeah. Uh. And the rest of it is Brian trying to figure out what to do. It's hilarious what he does sometimes. I'm like, Wow. I would not have yeah. a clear enough head. I would probably, um, just... Starve. You know, I would probably accidentally set myself on fire. <laughs> yeah, that's that's also... Uh, yeah, I could see you doing that. <laughs> I well, can barely get close to the oven in my own home. I have no idea how, how I would do that. Especially, but Brian like, is going through, like, full denial at the start before he's like... Before he gets himself together and eats poisonous berries. Oh, yeah, that's... Because that's the thing that you do. <laughs> They're the gut cherries or whatever. Right? But then he finds more berries. But more these berries. times, they're raspberries, so they're fine. Raspberries then he are them. delicious. But then he can't get them, really, because there's a bear there. And then he gets a shelter, and in the middle of the night, he hears noise and walks out, and there's a full porcupine there. In his shelter, that was horrible. and he throws the hatchet at a porcupine, and it shoots him with quills, which isn't how porcupines work. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, but then it lands on the flint. Yes, but then he throws his hatchet at flint. And he figures out that he can light fires with it. Flint and is so he steel. Minecraft, you're having effects on yes. people. Minecraft. Minecraft. <laughs> and then he finds turtle eggs and eats them. And then a plane flies overhead later, and it does not see him, and it continues, and Brian is hopeless. He actually, okay, uh, trigger warning, suicide. He tries to kill himself when? with his hatchet. Why don't I remember that? You probably blocked it out. I didn't either. But he is fine now. When? After trying to kill himself with his hatchet. Which chapter? I don't remember. It just it says so in my notes. By the way, all of my notes got deleted at one point, and so I've just got random snippets of things here. But I've got the full summary. Brian eventually learns how to catch a fish, and then another thing enters this shelter, and it's another small animal that kind of resembles a marsupial, and it's a skunk. And it sprays him, and it blinds him. For a moment, though. Eventually, he starts actually getting his life together. As far as getting your life together can be, stuck in the Canadian wilderness. I'm and... just reading this again, like, where did it say that? Because I have no recollection of that. And he catches a bird, and while he's cleaning the bird, a moose attacks him, and it injures his ribs and shoulder because this poor kid can't get a break. Why didn't and I another... not remember either of them? <laughs> And then another thing happens when a tornado ruins his shelter. Oh yeah, I remember that part. Apparently and... I'm not a good reader. I just don't remember things. And then, oh, apparently that wasted. tornado and that storm that he somehow survived because the moose didn't kill him. And it's a moose. I just realized, I'm rereading this. He didn't get killed when a moose tried to kill him. Have you ever seen a moose? I'm just trying to find the part where it says suicide uh, or something like that, but I am not finding anything. Okay, well, I'll look for that after this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, eventually, I guess it riled up the mud in the water because now the plane, now the tail of the plane is kind of sticking out of the water and it reminds. Brian of the dead pilot, and then he gets sad again, and he lays, and he's laying in bed, and he remembers that there is stuff in the plane for survival. And can so, we just, can we just, uh, pause for a minute to think about how a 13-year-old successfully crash-landed a plane into a lake while it, it was crashing, um... No, while it was off. crashing. <laughs> I guess that was kind of like the whole point of like the pilot trying to teach him how to do so. Yeah, but still, my brain. <laughs> also, he did seem to know a lot about planes since he was like talking about them and how he knew the tales and the survival packs. And... Yeah. Did you hear that? There's a lot of noise on my end. No, I don't, but um, I'm just, my, uh, my 13-year-old self would not survive that. I would die. Probably out of panic. Okay. So I would probably cry myself further? to death and dehydrate myself and I would be gone. Yes. Rose and I are fully aware that when it all that if anything were to go down, we would be the first ones dead. No matter how many zombie apocalypse theories I have watched, I would not survive. Oh yeah, definitely not. I can Climb a, uh, a rope, that's all. Yeah, that's good. That's a good thing to do. I am pitiful. You're also fit. <laughs> I am not. My brain Anyways, likes to scream at me. Okay. So, he builds a raft, gets out into the middle of this giant lake, and after many trials and errors, where he nearly drowns, Brian retrieves the survival pack from the plane, and... At one point, drops the hatchet on his, and he has, yeah, he drops his hatchet. I'm being surprised all over again, because I barely have any recollection of this. And then somehow retrieves it, 
and the plane was fully submerged in this lake. The the plane. The plane was submerged in this lake, and Brian is malnourished. How? I guess adrenaline must have kicked in, but... Yeah, anyways, here's the part I remember about Hatchet, and I have remembered it for years. While he's swimming back up, he sees the pi- the pilot's fish-eaten skeleton. Me too, that part haunted me. Off. That's the only piece of, like, thing besides the Moose. putrid smell of the pilot dead in the plane before it crashed that I remember from this book. Mm-hmm. Also the fool's uh, birds or whatever, but... That's and it. Brian is also traumatized, and he gets sick in the traumatized water. Traumatized from this book. And then manages to get back up, and he sleeps in his shelter that he had to make for the second time. Yeah. Let's be honest, if, it did, yeah. if you were somehow able to build the shelter the first time, you would be so demotivated the second time that I would have jumped in the lake <laughs> and been like, take me with you. Sacrifice myself to the moose slash bear slash wolf slash literally fish. everything that tried to kill him in this movie. Yeah. Did I say movie? I mean book. There should be a movie of this. There's sequels of this. I have never read them. But oh, I it. find it so interesting because there's a bunch. Yeah. Well, anyways, the next morning, Brian, this is still only the summary. This book is loaded. The next morning, Brian opens the survival pack. And he found it contained a lot of useful things. <clears throat> like, we wish we could have had this before. <laughs> which he could have had before. But it was too far underwater, which is why he didn't. And that storm was actually useful. And some of the things are, like, important things. But Brian has already made them for himself. Like, he which had already skinned cool. a few things. And he had made his own little coat. So he was actually pretty fine. Yeah, but there's although- also freeze-dried food. It's like, just add water. Now you have food. Yeah. Yay. He's got freeze-dried food, and he's got something labeled the emergency transmitter. And you'd think that if he spent that much time knowing about planes, then he would know what an emergency transmitter is. I and know. He fiddles with it, and it appears... Like, he function. knew how to work the headset on the plane, remember? Yeah. Like, he figures that out after a minute of panicking, which honestly, same. Same. <laughs> Yeah, there is still more, by the way. As Brian is preparing his meal, the plane lands in the ra- lake to rescue Brian, sitting with his freeze-dried meal. I thought that was, like, the cutest thing ever, though. Like, finally, someone saves him? Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was really interesting how they included the bit once he got, a, like, home, that he was in, like, news stations and stuff, because, like... Yeah, this boy just survived a month in the wilderness with nothing. Yeah. Just imagine that the end of the book is, and then he wakes up back in his shelter, having eaten the stupid berries again. That would be horrible. Oh, drug berries. Gut berry. It gut cherries. They're called gut cherries? Yeah, I think so. I'm forever referring to them as drug berries now. <laughs> the special mushrooms. Looks it up real quick. Do 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 do. Okay. My copy Probably has. That, but basically, cool story. Is this just going to be us sarcastically reviewing books? Is that what this Probably. is going to be? Wonderful. Do 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 do. Okay. There were many questions in his mind about well, to what um he had seen and known, and he worked at research when he got back, identifying the game and berries. Gut cherries were turned cho- uh, choke berries. So they're actually called choke berries, but uh, he named them gut cherries, and made good jelly. The nut bushes where the fool birds hid were hazelnut bushes. The two kinds of rabbits were snowshoes and cottontails. The fool birds were ruffled grouse, also called fools uh, fool hens, and trappers um, by trappers for their stupidity. The small (laughs) food fish were bluegill, sunfish, and perch. The turtle eggs were laid by a snapping turtle, as he had thought. The bulls were timber wolves, um, which are not known to attack or bother people. The moose was a moose. Oh yeah, by the way, did we mention the wolves? I did. 
because at one point, Brian is mortified because he sees a bunch of wolves and he hears their howling. And it scares him. But he's keeping his distance. And so he eventually goes up, not up to the wolves, but he watches them from a distance. Because I'm pretty sure they stole his deer at one point. Oh, really? I don't remember that. I just thought they were there. Yeah, they were just kind of there. And he sees the moose that attacked him getting eaten alive. Yay! They, like, immobilize the Vengeance! Okay, I'm going to go into gruesome detail here. Because I remember this. And I don't remember reading it the second time. But I remember reading it the first time. So this is all from four years ago memory. Four years ago? Not four years ago. But... I just remembered that they were, like, eating its back legs out, and so as its guts were spilling out, and they were eating it, and the moose is, like, trying to crawl away. And it traumatized fourth grade me. Well, I'm about to cry, so Rose, take over. Okay, um, I have one question about this, and that is, why did they make us read this in fourth grade? I don't know. Because there are so many traumatizing bits in this, like, it's super gory. Why? <laughs> I feel like I wouldn't be able to, like, read this in sixth grade either. Mm -hmm. Or maybe just in sixth grade. But, like, in fourth grade, I feel like I was way too young. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, By yeah. the way. Yes. There, I did some extra research on this. Here's a quote from, I don't know what, I don't know how to call it, but it's somethingschool.org. Hatchet has been banned because some parents are uncomfortable with the trauma Brian experiences. The Giver, which we read earlier, has been banned because of Jonah's rebelliousness when he breaks away from society. That's the whole point of The Giver! That's the whole point of The Giver! I mean, I feel like uh, when we read The Giver, which was 6th grade, um for school, I had already read The Giver, and I read, really loved it, um, but I feel like it's unfair to ban a book for being what the book is. I feel like it's unfair to ban the book if it isn't, like, hurting anyone, like, why, why are you telling kids not to, not to be rebellious? Is not it because dystopias things. are, dystopias, dystopias Dystopians. are warnings, dystopias are warnings. We did a whole section on this in the beginning of the dystopias. pandemic. It was horrible. <laughs> if you ban a dystopia because the main character is rebellious when they are quite literally killing children. Yeah. I feel like it makes more sense children to ban that hatchet. No, 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 no. It's not the killing children. It's not the, it's not the killing old people. It is the rebellious kid. Yeah, I, I understand why they banned Hatchet, though, because, honestly, it is traumatizing for yeah. younger readers. Exactly. Um, and it's just ridiculously gory. Um, like, mm. But I do I think mean, that that adds to the bit that, like, surviving in the wilderness is not fun, it's gritty, and it's upsetting. Yeah. And I do like that, but do not give it to a seven-year-old. I have a story about, like, uh, giving uh, books that have, you know, like, are pretty good books, but they encourage you to do the wrong things. So, um, you know how Hatchet kind of influenced us to look at more at, like, survivalist sections and, like, oh, that's cool, interesting kind of stuff. Have you ever read The Boxcar Children or heard of it? Oh, yes, I love The Boxcar Children. So, when I was seven, eight, Six, seven, eight. I had read uh, a couple of the Boxcar Children. They were like some of my favorite books, and I had an irrational uh, <laughs> love, like fantasy of running away <laughs> oh, me for too. a ridiculous amount of time. Though, like I had yeah, at the end when they got like made back up, I was like, no, plans stay in the woods. Away. Oh no, don't do that. I I didn't I I didn't end it up, but I, I I like legit played a game with my friends. Like, hey, we're gonna pretend to run away now. Oh no! Like but we would go to a random place. Something... Like I think we went to like a corn maze or whatever, and 
there was this one place, and I was playing with uh, one of my friends, and we were, we were just like, what if we just stayed here, and our parents left? Oh, no. But I think there's something about that childlike adventure of what if we were independent from our parents. What would yeah. happen then? But the okay, boxcar children definitely influenced that in me. Like, that was the place where that happened. <laughs> yeah. That was where that came from. Quick there disclaimer, are... don't run away unless your parents are abusive. And then In which case, I can't give people. advice on that because we're not, chil- we're children. We, we can't we're, give we're advice children. on that. We're children, that's the whole point of this podcast. Yes, we, we're children. We, we don't know. We do. It's, it's 2020. Yeah. <laughs> okay, back to the fun <laughs> part, which is books. Back to books. So, yeah, Hatchet. So Hatchet. Very interesting concept. Like Overall a good book. Great book. It's just the fact that it's gory, but I really did like, I liked the first chapter of The Secret, and it didn't tell you The Secret, which was the mom was having an affair. Until yeah. late, until a lot later, and that, and The Secret was mentioned quickly enough that it drew you in. And I remember reading Hatchet for the sole purpose of, I want to know what the secret is. I did not do that. I um, forgot the secret was even a part of the book. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I I know. I just remember Gory uh, Pilot. (laughs) That's all I got from this story. (laughs) Yeah. And Survivaling and Fool Birds, because that was the only part that I got. But I also, or uh, relating to the secret, I felt like it was really smart how the author um, used repetition in this book. Like, he went, the secret, yeah. the secret, the secret, the secret, the secret. Uh, mistakes. This kid is, like, trying to process everything. Like, uh, Brian in chapter three, the beginning of chapter three goes, going to die, Brian thought. Going to die, gonna die, gonna die. His old brain screamed in the sudden silence, gonna die. <laughs> um, I wonder if it has more, but no. I don't think it highlighted anything That's else. That's actually, like, a really good point, is that a lot of really good literature devices are used. Or how the sentences get longer as the pilot starts going down. Mm. And as it gets worse and worse and worse, because Brian's, like, about to die, about to die. The end of that yeah. chapter is, and then I threw up. Four words, and then I threw Five words. Wait, words. the end of chapter two or chapter chapter one? Oh yeah, probably. And then I threw up because that is, it is kind of like it literally has the story structure of going, 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 and having these long drawn sentences, and in his mind they're all also pretty long, and I just really like that. And as Actually, the plane goes down, they get longer, and when it hits the water, it stops. In chapter one. Chapter two, sorry. Okay, chapter two, sorry. In the first, in chapter one, uh, it ends with, he was alone. In the roaring plane with no pilot, he was alone. Alone. So, there's another example of that. Mm-hmm. I think the chapters have really good endings. Like, it ends in a good place for each chapter. And neither of us have divorced parents, luckily, so I don't really know about what he's going through at that point. Yeah, I have really good parents. Like, they're great. I am very lucky for that and fortunate. Um, also, chapter three ends with nothing. Yeah. So it's just stuff like that of ending the chapters on this sort of dull and stopped note because it halts you. Yeah. And it's really fascinating. It also uh, like builds up a lot of anticipation, you know, like yeah. it really gets your adrenaline going. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Also, I do like that it... Yeah, by the way, it says that it's for ages 11 plus. We shouldn't then why have did reading... we read it when we were, like, 9? Yeah. 9, 10. I mean, like, 10's not that bad, but still. Yeah. I guess we're just both really hung up on the violence. Yeah, Ladies. it has a Newbery Honor uh, Award for this book. I mean, it's fantastic book fantastic writing like 
great. It has... I feel like it doesn't go in, like, the regular pacing or is as much of regular pacing as other books do, like that normal build-up mountain, whatever. Yeah. It's got kind of the overall theme of trust, but take matters into your own hands. Yeah. Um, You need to have faith, you need to keep yourself going. You need to have faith to stay alive, um, and not even religious faith. That's actually a thing I, um, you start seeing in movies a lot more, is that thing about hope and faith. Yeah. And when you were really little, it was just hope. But as you move forward, it's faith. faith I, just, that I still have hope. I feel <laughs> I don't have any faith. I'm like, I have no faith in the world right now. And I actually think that that's a pretty good uh, thing for 2020, is that... Faith. You need to have faith. It's 2021. Not, not even religious. You need to have faith in your family. You need to have faith in your friends. And you need to have faith in yourself. You cannot hope for anything. And you cannot trust for anything if you do not trust yourself. And all self-critique? Good. Self-hatred? No. Do not do that. It's... But it's hard. I know. I know. <laughs> Everything is hard easy. in the world. Um, side note, not really anything near that. Um, my, I have a hardcover of, ha- uh, like, a hard copy of Hatchet, um, while, uh, Larks is on computer or whatever. So, um, I have a reading group guide inside at the end, and I would just like to, uh, l- uh, look at some discussion questions to see if we have anything. Cool. Maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure if we actually time. have anything here. I'm just looking at them real quick, so let me just do it. Yeah, this is the first episode of the podcast. It's going to get better, we promise. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully it does better. If you have any books that you would uh, be interested in us reading, like any books that you really hated or really loved, leave them in the comments down below. We would love yeah. to look at that. Or suggestions yeah. or any improvements that we can do because uh we try and we really want to get better at this as well as movies or tv shows would that also be fun to do and yeah. other subjects like writing novels fan fiction books that you would read for school and fairy tale retellings uh tell um, us if you want barbie to movies those, well. barbie movies is another thing that i would like to discuss yes I wrote about, um, a Barbie movie in sixth grade for an elective. Like, that was something that I did. Mm-hmm. So, next, should we try and do either... I think that as a next step, we should probably do The Giver, as we've already sort of segued into it. I feel like that would be interesting, although... The, not sequel, but kind of a book that goes along with The Giver is Finding Blue or something like that. Oh, have you ever read that? Oh, no, never. Oh, well, that's part of The Giver situation. Um, That was my favorite Giver book, although I've only read two of them, so I cannot say much. <laughs> Just okay. The Giver and so- Finding Blue. Reminder, up and coming is The Giver. We do not know when. It may be before, it might be after or something. Yeah. Um, we'll probably leave that in the description below or whatever. Check the description for any information about what's going to be happening or anything. Um, Wonder Holes and the Boxcar Children would also be options. Yeah, true. You should probably uh, set up take a break between those. Wonder, comma, holes, comma, <laughs> boxcar children. Yes, the wonder holes, I, boxcar children. I just heard. I just heard wonder holes. <laughs> like what's wonder holes? It sounds like a wormhole. Mm, you true. just jump into it. When I think of wormholes, you just kind of think of that thing from Coraline, the tube. I wonder, for uh, Hatchet, let's, uh, if we're going back to Hatchet for a bit, um, what would have happened in the Doctors? Like, what did Doctors do once he got back, Brian got back? Like, this child has several bruised ribs, a broken leg that has healed itself in a weird direction, and, ooh, trauma. 
Trauma! Which parent do you think would pay for the medical bills? Oh, that would be an interesting question. I think it would be... Both? Both. I mean, the mom doesn't seem like a great person because, you know... Whoever... You um get on your spouse. I feel like they would have to sue the... The, like the people that own the flights and stuff like the airport yeah i would think that they would sue those people and get a bunch of money back for um that kind of stuff because child being lost in the wilderness potentially dead yeah definitely and like medical bills and stuff they can definitely sue and get insurance for all of that probably yeah i mean suing for uh, stuff like that, gets a ton of money, I would think. Like, yeah. I know someone in my family um, sued and almost like got a million dollars or something like that for medical miss done. But that also, if someone died, so. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Oh. I I didn't know who died. I just know that that happened at some point. Anyways, hatchets. <laughs> Hatchet. <laughs> um, takeaway, gory book, good. Uh, interesting plot. Uh, didn't follow the normal structure of books, I would say, but still would recommend reading it if you're or older than maybe 12. Yeah. Also, okay. just a quick thing on, I guess, what a hatchet is. First off, it's, it's a giant axe that's got a polished side used for like hammering and it's got another side used for axing that probably should have been told to me while i was reading this book because honestly i still didn't know i was like hmm huh i feel like you got a lot more information out of this book than i did i went oh really he was going there i'm like i didn't even know where he was going i just knew it was somewhere in canada i thought i was not sure if that was true but yeah (laughs) We're from New York. I had no idea. <laughs> I'm just I'm just looking up uses for hatchets. One of the first things that comes up is it legal to walk around with a katana? Just... <laughs> I mean, hypnotifies. maybe. <laughs> um. Why? Okay, but now I need to know it. I actually need to know. Do tell. What? I'm about to go down a rabbit hole of can you carry a baton illegally in the U.S. Oh, I, um, probably need a license. Like a weapons license. Okay. okay. Cosplay is cool. I don't know. I Why did I say that, huh? I'm gonna look up in Texas. Okay. Where? Okay. <laughs> in Texas. Just automatically assumes Texas is the right place. On the subject of okay, serious yeah. injuries. Yeah, it's fine. You can do it. Okay, cool. On the subject of serious in- injuries in my family, because apparently we went there for some reason, sure. um, my uncle cracked his skull diving into a pool and didn't notice until hours afterwards. Oh, that's not good. He's alive. He's uh, great, honestly. He has a scar on his head. It's really cool. Um... My grandma fell out of, like, a second-story window. My dad fell out of a tree. And my mom kind of got yoked. At least it's less dumb than deliberately diving into a pool and smacking your head at the bottom and then not noticing. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. I have now- I now have problems with people diving into pools uh, that are way too shallow for it. Um, because exactly. I do not want it's people just, to be hurt near me, um, especially since I had to travel hours to get to any relatives at all. <laughs> Don't mind, uh, Lark's dog. Just, it's there. We, uh, we have animals. We cannot control the animals. They are alive beings. Yes, they are very loud. Yes. <laughs> I... I live in a dog neighborhood. There's going to be a lot of this. There's nothing we can do. These aren't even our dogs. I have a bird. Yes. Rose has a bird. 
Okay. okay. So. Eggs are delicious. Um, I wonder how a turtle egg would taste. Me too, honestly. In that scene, I was like, but how did it taste? Like, I want to fry it one now. Like, hot stone or something? Yeah, I would. I would totally eat that if I had a chance. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I would totally eat one. Please give me one now while I was reading that. Or just like um, stuff into your mouth with the shell. I wonder how the author came to the conclusion that it was oily. Like an oily egg. Did he eat a snapping turtle egg? Or did he eat like a raw egg? Up? It's oily. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I never have. <laughs> I am obviously. <laughs> I have problems with food and textures. Ha. Huh. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's cool. I was about to say something and I forgot what it was. Have you eaten a raw egg? Oh, no. Then how do you know it's oily? Back to the topic of injury. Uh, Rose and I, at one point, at school together, broke, fractured my toe while doing jumping jacks in dancing class. When? What? What happened? I fractured my toe, my little toe, doing jumping jacks in dancing class and had to have two friends carry me wounded soldier style <laughs> up a few flights of stairs or up like one flight or no two flights each of five stairs to the main office about a about an eighth of a mile across the school our school spans about an eighth of a mile from yeah. one end to the other and the office and the dance rooms um are on complete opposite ends so <laughs> You were you were about as far as you could get. Was I in? Like, was I? Oh, you in? were you were in school at the time. Oh, was it I? It was like nearing the end of the day. Did you not see me walking around with like a giant boot afterwards? No, I have no recollection. Of this. I would like limp down the hall after you. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, I didn't know what happened. I, I just assumed something happened. Days. You never told me anything happened. I was just like, okay, now she's wearing a boot. I had to use the elevator. I had to use the elevator for some of it. Oh. By the way, apparently my feet heal, like, really fast because I was done in, like, a month. Oh, interesting. I've had ankle stuff worse than that, probably. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it probably really hurt, hurt more hurt. with you, but... <laughs> and it's actually... It's one of my core memories now and probably one of my best memories just because I am so proud of the two <laughs> friends, one of which I barely knew and I do not know, who just carried me up like had to half carry me up the stairs i'm just so proud of them that's amazing they were great yeah i remember that you were in a boot but i don't think you ever told me what happened yeah you did not talk to me a lot while in school like you were not chatty to me at all i just remember like walking down and you were at your locker and we were going to do puzzle club that's what it was. Okay. Hmm. I vaguely remember that something happened, but I, you did not tell me what happened at all. Like, <laughs> I considered you such a close friend. <laughs> you didn't tell me anything. You didn't talk to me very much. Did I not? No, I had to make up most of the conversation. I felt so awkward most of the time. Oh, no, but I really enjoyed it. I loved you. Oh, I you just was worried I was annoying you. The whole time. Oh, no, no, I liked you. Oh, I liked you, nice. too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this is fun. Group therapy with two people, with Bros and Larks. Yes. I had to Fingers. remember fake names for a moment. Me too, honestly. I feel like I this get... entire conversation, you probably don't know what this is. But this entire conversation just sounds like a Sanders side of bloopers. <laughs> Yeah, probably. Oh, you know it. No, I don't. I oh. just said probably because I would agree with you. Because yeah. it probably does. We're gonna watch that together. And please no. Yes. We've got nothing to talk. We had nothing. Should we to go talk back to Hatchet? Hatchet? So we've just kind of carried Hatchet... the conversation through meaningless other things. Yeah, Hatchet's kind of a bad book to start out with because like there is no ranting about how bad it is or how good it is it's kind of just it was gory here's some fun stories about people 
almost dying slash dying in my family. Uh, larks broke their toe. Yeah, larks broke their toe. Okay, next we're going to do, can we please do a really bad book next? The Wild Robot. That sounds like horrible. Ooh, like funny bad or just bad bad? I mean, I ended up cutting the book with scissors, so. Okay, but what type of bad was it? What flavor? Was it like misogynistic bad? bad? Was it like men writing women bad? Or was it like, um, what is it like? So, consider. Or was it like stupid bad? I will tell you the the type of book that this is. Okay. It um it is about a robot. Okay. And it landed on an island. Okay. And it's in the middle of nature. Aw, cute. This and it learns cool how premise. to talk to animals. That sounds like a cool premise. But it isn't. It's the most boring thing ever. Oh, it's boring? Well, kind of. I really disliked it for some reason. Because it was one of the books I had read for book club or whatever. Because I have been in, like, three for book clubs. It's actually not a Bob book. Um, oh, it's not a Bob book? No, it was my previous Bob <laughs> I was in a book club in Florida as oh. well. I lived in Florida for third and fourth grade. So, okay. in fourth grade, I also joined the Battle of the Books team. And that was one mm. of the books. So, uh, Wild Robot it was such a boring book. I okay. I mean, it wasn't horrible. Like, it wasn't mm, just, I had problems with it. Same problems with Wonder, honestly. Like, not the same problems with Wonder. I just didn't like Wonder. Wonder I did not find it interesting. Even though I find a lot of books like that interesting. Um, but Wild Robot like, just reminded my dears. We're just slowly, like, subtly trying to be like, look, there's more. There's more. There's more. more. There's We're not more. Boring, books. We promise. <laughs> look, look how interesting we are. I applaud anyone who listened to us this whole time because honestly. Yeah, um, yeah what are you doing with your life? Go outside. What are. Don't say that. People will be offended. Um, Larks. Rose. I'm Lark. <laughs> By the I, way. my mother, um, read more of Hatchet, like, more of Gary Paulson's books, like, in the Hatchet family, whatever, series. I said family. I just always switch it around, like, Gary Paulson or Gary Paulson. You might want to repeat, like, the last minute of that, because, um, after, uh, an hour, my capturing goes away, so it, uh, I had to get it up again, so you might want to just... Rewind for Got me. it. So, like, you know how people will be like, or how people have son at the end of their name? Mm-hmm. Like I Gary Paulson? Always, yeah, I always just kind of take the son away. So now it's instead of Gary Paulson. Just Gary Paul? No, it's Paul Gary's son. It's like, oh, yes, this is Paul Gary's son. <laughs> uh, Russian actually does That's something like, like that. Oh, I did. I thought I, I thought I was mispronouncing Jerry for a while. No, it's Gary. Why um, are people like Jerry and Gary? That should. That's all the Jerry's and Gary's out there. You're great, but I am constantly worried that I'm mixing the two up, and I'm saying them wrong. True. Pretty sure it's Gary though. It looks like a Gary. It's G A R Y. So. Ah, uh, okay. I just remember how letters work for a minute there. <laughs> like, what am I- what am I saying? Seriously, if you've stayed this long, like, what- why? Applause. Why? Anyways, do you want to wrap this up? Uh, yeah, probably. Probably it's time to wrap this up. Um... Yeah. Thank you for watching if you did this far slash listening because it's supposed to be a podcast, but maybe not. I don't know. Um, yeah. I wonder if I can upload this to Spotify. I'll send you the file art. Um, okay. <laughs> 
We hope you enjoyed. If you have any recommendations for books that you really hated or really enjoyed. If um, you're here still, let us know. Let us know in the comments down below. We love hearing from you guys. Uh, you guys. You. Yes, because we have an audience. Pretend. Fake it till you make it, okay? Got it. That's what I do every day. <laughs> Fake it. Okay. Um, Anyways. Yeah. Uh, bye. Adios. Peace. Paca. Bless. Uh, bye. Bye. <laughs>